السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدری ويسر لي امری واحلل عقدۃ من لسانی یفقه قولی is Allah. Some of the biggest misconceptions that many non-Muslims have about Islam have to do with the word Allah. For various reasons, many people have come to believe that Muslims worship a different God than Christians and Jews. This is totally false since Allah is a unique word in the Arabic language for God. And there is only one God. Let there be no doubt. Muslims worship the God of Noah, Abraham, Moses, David and Jesus. Peace be upon them all. However, it is certainly true that Jews, Christians and Muslims all have a different concept of Almighty God. For example, Muslims, like Jews, reject the Christian belief of the Trinity and the Divine Incarnation. This, however, does not mean that each of these three religions worship a different God. Because, as we have already said, there is only one true God. Judaism, Christianity and Islam all claim to be Abrahamic faiths and all of them also classified as monotheistic. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was asked by his contemporaries about Allah as to who is Allah. And the answer came directly from Allah himself in the form of a short chapter of the Quran, which is considered to be the essence of unity of monotheism. This is chapter 112, Surah Ikhlas, which reads as follows. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل هو اللہ احد اللہ السمد لم یلد ولم یلد ولم یکل له کفوا احد Translation of Surah Al-Ikhlas Say, O Prophet, He is Allah, the one and indivisible. Allah, the sustainer, absolute. He begets not, nor he was begotten. There is no one like him, and there is none co-equal or comparable to him. God is perfect. God does not have any human limitations, such as resting on the seventh day after he created the universe. God always maintains attributes of perfection and does not do anything to compromise this perfection, such as becoming a man. As claimed by the religions, God does not do ungodly acts. So if God became man and took on human attributes, he would necessarily no longer be God. The concepts such as God resting on the seventh day of creation God wrestling with one of his soldiers, God being envious, plotter against mankind, or God being incarnate in any human form or human being are considered blasphemy from the Islamic point of view. In order to worship God, we have to know him well, otherwise we may form a distorted concept of him and then go astray. God is nothing like a human being or like anything that we can imagine. And He is the only one worthy of worship. The proper terminology used in Islam for God is Allah. There are a number of reasons for having a special word for God. 
first of all the term Allah in Arabic language means the one and only the one and only universal God or creator and provider of the universe notice here I'm emphasizing the one and only so Muslims would not simply say there is one God that would not be as accurate or as strong in expression as saying Allah which means the one and only God furthermore it should also be noted that the Arabic word Allah contains a deep religious message due to its root meaning and origin this is because it stems from the Arabic verb ta'ala or ala which means to be worshipped thus in Arabic the word Allah means the one who deserves all worship this in a nutshell is the pure monotheistic message of Islam The other very interesting and important thing which I consider also relevant is that the term Allah in Arabic is not subject to plurality. The word Allah cannot be made plural, a fact that goes hand in hand with the Islamic concept of monotheism. For example, in English you can say God and you can also say gods. In Arabic, there is nothing that is equivalent to the term gods nothing whatsoever therefore in other words there is no Allah's for example this emphasizes the purity of the Islamic monotheism a third reason which is quite pertinent and interesting as well is the term Allah does not lend itself to any gender in other words there is no female or male gender for the term Allah in English you can have God and you can have goddesses in Arabic this simply doesn't exist which shows that the term Allah is a lot more accurate than using the term God even if you are using a capital G at least it is relatively more accurate in conveying the true nature of the supreme creator Allah Almighty introduces himself in the following verse the verse is named the verse of the throne Ayatul Kursi it is the greatest verse of the noble Quran one should ponder over it listen to Allah talking about himself and try to go deeper in knowing him and the verse goes as follows Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Allah there is no God but him the living the self-sustaining he is not subject to drowsiness or sleep everything in the heavens and the earth belongs to him who can intercede with him except by his permission he knows what is before them and what is behind them but they cannot grasp any of his knowledge save what he wills his footstool encompasses the heavens and the earth and their preservation does not tire him he is the most high the magnificent Quran Surah Baqarah Surah number 2 verse 255 the belief in the existence of Allah the evidence for the existence of Allah is established by number one fitra number two reasoning number three asharia number four al his
Pertaining to the proof of the fitra or understanding fitra, every creature has been created in a state of belief in his creator without preceding thought or education. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Each child is born in a state of fitra, but his parents make him a Jew or a Christian or an atheist or a polytheist. The Evidence of Reasoning I was a child. Before that, I was inside my mother's womb. Before that, where was I? Creatures need a creator. Why? Creatures can't bring themselves into existence. A thing cannot create itself. They can't come to exist by coincidence. Every occurrence must need an originator. Which means that they were neither created without a creator, nor they were the creators of themselves. It becomes clear, therefore, that the creator is Allah. The primary attribute of Allah in the Holy Qur'an is mercy, rahma. Synonyms of mercy include compassion, forgiveness, kindliness, leniency, gentleness, and goodwill. There is an entire chapter in the Qur'an called Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Mercy appears about 348 times in the Qur'an. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. The opening words to all but one chapter of the Holy Quran begins with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allah says in the Quran, My mercy encompasses everything. Surah number 7, verse number 156. When Allah completed the creation, He wrote in the book with Him upon the throne, Verily, my mercy prevails over my wrath. Hadith from Bukhari and Muslim When you read the Quran, the oneness and supremacy mentioned by Allah in it may give you goosebumps. Such is the power of Allah's words in the Quran. Allah says, Whatever Allah grants to people of mercy, none can withhold it. And whatever He withholds, none can release it thereafter. And He is the exalted in might and the wise. Surah Fatir Surah number 35, verse number 2. Allah says in the Quran, All fish of the seas are made lawful for you to eat. Surah number 5, verse number 96. The two seas are not the same. One is fresh and delicious, while the other is salty and undrinkable. From each of them you eat tender meat and extract jewelry to wear and you see the ship sailing through them seeking his provision that you may be appreciative surah number 35 verse number 12 allah says in the quran and he committed the sea to serve you you eat from it tender meat and extract jewelry which you wear and you see the ships roaming in it for your commercial benefits as you seek his bounties that you may be appreciative surah number 16 verse number 14 allah says in the quran about the signs that night and day and light and darkness he says Behold in the creation of the heavens and the earth 
and the alternation of night and day. There are indeed signs for men of understanding. Surah number 3 verse 190 In Surah Hashar, Allah describes Himself. He says, He is Allah and there is no God besides Him, the knower of the unseen and the seen. He is the merciful. He is Allah and there is no God besides Him. He is the Holy One, the source of peace the mighty. Holy is Allah far above that which they associate with Him. He is Allah the Creator. His are the most beautiful names. All that is in the heavens and the earth glorifies Him. And He is the mighty, the wise. Surah 59 Surah Hashar, verses 23 to 25. Al Qayyum, he is the first and the last. One of the 99 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On everything in this world, Allah has placed a limit. Everything has a finite existence. This being the case, in order to comprehend eternity and Allah's finite might, we need to exercise our minds and compare these ideas with something that is familiar. If the Maker is not temporal, then He must be eternal. If He is eternal, however, He cannot be caused. And if nothing caused him to come into existence, nothing outside him causes him to continue to exist, which means that he must be self-sufficient. And if he does not depend on anything for the continuance of his own existence, then this existence can have no end. So the Creator is therefore eternal and everlasting, the first and the last. We can only come to know to the extent that Allah permits us the knowledge. And Allah, however, is infinite in knowledge. Finally, there are two ways to know Allah. Firstly, by reflecting upon the divine handiwork in creation, His creation, and secondly, by studying the Qur'an, the word of Allah, contemplating over the Qur'an and pondering over its meanings. Try to understand to know Allah better through His beautiful names and attributes mentioned in the Qur'an. أن الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Thank you. Please do subscribe to my channel, like, share, comment and don't forget to click the bell icon for notification of new videos. جزاك الله خير